Hello everyone, this is Bear with you. Today, I'm going to teach you how to flush a diaper down the toilet. What do you got there? These are good nights for girls. So this is what it's like being a pamper and getting diapered. This is what it's like being an old baby. I, I personally... Yeah. Where's the car, baby? That's nasty, man! This is Michael Gifford, better known online as Pamper Chew. He's infamous primarily for his interest in paraphilic infantilism, which basically means he gets off to wearing diapers. In his schizophrenic rambling vlogs, Pamper Chew describes himself to be a furry, a brony, and allegedly is a minor attracted person. His affinity for vintage technology, expired food, and his ability to somehow financially maintain his lifestyle despite his incoherent mental state, has provided for a sizable audience that curiously look on. He's an almost mythical figure on the internet these days for his shockingly degenerate behavior, but pick apart his disjointed and questionable monologues and you'll discover a tragic past of abuse within his childhood. Hello everyone, this is Pamperchew. Although his original YouTube channel has long since been deleted, an archive of it indicates that he's had a presence on YouTube since at least 2008. However, he did appear in G4's Attack for the Show in 2005, which featured segments on pop culture, video games, and movies. Here on Attack of the Show, we love dressing up in fursuits. However, it's come to our attention that there is a vast amount of people out there that enjoy laying on the fur much more than we do. Wiggle it. Oh, so cute. Yeah, we're thinking it too. Some of his first YouTube videos included him reviewing old technology, unboxing diapers, or wearing his bunny suit in public. It's from this time that he also uploaded his diaper party meetups with his friends. Oddly, he was still living with his parents, yet they seemed indifferent to his guests. And this was expanded upon further by Pampertru stating that his mother has slight interest in paraphilic infantilism, if his word is to be taken at face value. In 2012, Pampertru would create an account on the Daily Diapers forum, and interact regularly with others that shared a diaper fetish. A post from June 25th, 2013 reads, quote, I found this mini 32 gigabyte flash drive and thought it would be great for the younger ABTLs that still have to hide their diaper picture and video collections. Check out how small the USB drives can get. With replies to Pamperchu's thread, such as, quote, Even better is SD card. You will need a card reader, but the cards are so tiny that they can seal easily. Wafer thing less than 4 by 2 inches, end quote. As these videos continued up to the present, much of Pamperchew's lifestyle began to reveal itself. He enjoys microwaving not just old food, but diapers as well. So much so, that he disabled the safety features on his microwave to make this easier to accomplish. His later vlog about being diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a form of cancer, makes one wonder if this might have been a cause of it. Hello everyone, it's me, Pamperchew. Today I wanted to make a video talking about my recent medical trips and my hospital visits and things like that. They took a, like a, a needle and took three core samples and they tested two of them. One of them was inconclusive, the other one was that it showed signs of the cancer. So I do have uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. In one video, a commenter noticed what appears to be drug paraphernalia is resting on his counter, giving credence to Pamperchew's statement that he struggles with addiction to a number of substances, including crack and alcohol. So somebody brought up uh, my drinking, and they're asking me if it runs in the family. Um, I remember sharing a beer with my grandma when I was two years old. But I didn't start drinking until I ran out of what I uh, have been taking pretty much my whole life. So I'm not going to use the words of the actual drug, but one makes you a tweaker and one makes you a heroin addict. Other videos revealed much more, like that he might have dyspraxia, a motor control disability, regularly relies on food stamps, has a foot fish, and could have a decent amount of savings in Bitcoin when he mined it years ago. Today, a little package showed up in the mail for me. I ordered a couple of used Bitcoin miners last week, actually two days ago, and uh, they showed up pretty quickly. Um, this is the one I've been using for the last couple weeks, and it was uh, a failed unit I got really cheap. While he does claim some ridiculous things, like working for Google at one point, other statements are more realistic and intriguing, 
such as when he said that he worked for Brooks Automation, a company that manufactured semiconductor equipment. His content would continue to become more and more deranged until eventually his channel was removed for violating YouTube's terms of service for sexual misconduct. But let's dig a little bit deeper. Superficially, Pamperchu is just another diaper degenerate with access to YouTube. But pay attention to the characters he interacts with, and you'll see a behavior that is much more egregious than what even Pamperchu does. Ribble Foxy, real name Avery Babbitt, is a close friend of fellow diaper for Pamperchu and even owns a vintage Pamperchu onesie. Avery is a self-described, quote, lovable eccentric ABDL baby for diaper boy, end quote, who enjoys sharing his love of diaper fetishism with the world through his YouTube channel, Rebel Foxy, and claims to advocate for the ABDL community, educating people on how, quote, this lifestyle has nothing to do with kids, end quote. Avery has a number of videos where he discusses Pamper Chew and their friendship. He's actually the coolest person that you never meet in your entire life. The people you call him a pedophile. He's not one of those people. He's mentally deranged. You see, first of all, he's asexual. This means non-sexual. Um, coming from the Greek word for um, no or non. Avery's channel, just like Pamper Chew's, would later be deleted for similar violations of YouTube's TOS with respect to sexual misconduct. This isn't surprising though, when you're posting stuff like this. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? This is Saib, or also known as Ross Herbert Reddick, a neck-bearded butthurt diaper fur who's been charged for possession of CP. While I wouldn't consider this next person a friend of Pamper Chew's, he's at least thought it was important enough to take a picture with him at a convention. He's been banned from numerous conventions, forums, and considers himself a pimp daddy. Even worse, the guy's HIV positive, but argues that he shouldn't have to disclose that to people he's intimate with. In a tweet by at Faulty Player, privacy and not being shamed is great, but not spreading it to someone else is much more important. With Saib reply tweeting, quote, No, it's not more important than the privacy of someone who has HIV. You're just completely wrong. End quote. On July 15th, 2011, Saib was found to have at least 100 pics of minors in a sexual manner. Saib, knowing he had HIV, urinated on his roommate, robbed him, stole his car, and left town to avoid prosecution. However, after intimidating his underage victim into lying to the cops and prosecutor by saying that she told Saib she was over 18, this sexual predator still walks the streets to this day. Or how about the guy that got Pamper Chew into diaper fetishism? Paul R. Freeman, going by names such as Inky, Daddy Inky, Baby Inky, Diaper Baby Boy 2000. Paul is a 71-year-old alleged pedo ABDL fetishist who mentored Pamper Chew into the lifestyle and solicits minors online. He was caught hitting on minors and prompting them to talk about sex fetishes on Instagram and claims that being told to stop is harassment. Additionally, his Facebook states that he's a mason, he's worked in the Department of Commerce, and apparently he's a minister, or at least study to be one. Here he is, making Bible quotes on Facebook while posting this on his Reddit account. Worst part is, that if his Facebook page is to be believed, he's a grandfather which means he certainly has access to children. He also tried to make a few posts on social media, trying to convince people that he's some sort of Bitcoin millionaire that's able to buy high-end real estate but some anon doing a simple reverse image search blew that shit out of the water. These people and more are the company Pamperchu keeps. More recently, in a series of Telegram posts, Pamperchu admitted the sole thing that his friends had been denying he was for years. Well, I'm not a retard, but I am a pedophile, so quit it. He also goes on to detail how the parents in his neighborhood are fearful of him. So much so, that the feds knocked on his door to check for CP, but didn't find anything. Yet the most shocking thing that Pamper Chew would reveal is that he was a victim of CSA when he was a toddler, perpetrated by a man named Steve, who worked with Pamper Chew's own grandparents to groom Pamper Chew into degeneracy. Steve doesn't target children. He likes uh, teenagers, but in the, his younger days, he did hung, it, hung out with the younger. And uh, his neighbor came over and said, Steve, what are you doing? You have the music turned up to 100, and there's naked teenagers in your house. You know, you can't be doing this. So, anyway, that happened. And that's the story he told me. Yes, my, min my mother knows about this man. She signed the contract uh, when I was like four. I would never, why would I turn Steve in for? The statute of limitations already canceled that. Also, I accepted that and wanted that. 
oh man, it was fun getting d- off the back of the Camaro. There's much more depth to this than just that, but it's not something appropriate for YouTube. Anyways, I'll be in therapy for the next decade as I work through all the sh- that I saw from researching this video. But in the meantime, leave a comment down below if you want me to cover a specific locale in my next video. Yeah, that's a CIA guy right there. FBI, right?